proposed a diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Olympic Winter Games in China. What does that mean? You've come to the right place to find out. This is CNN 10, an objective explanation of the news, and I'm Carl Azus. Thank you for watching. In normal times, the U.S. typically sends a delegation, a group of people representing the government, to the Olympics. It will not be doing this next February when the 2022 Winter Olympics are held in the Chinese capital of Beijing. And this same decision applies to the Paralympics, which are happening in March. American athletes can still compete in these games and represent their country. International spectators from outside China won't be allowed, but that's because of Olympic COVID restrictions. It has nothing to do with the boycott. So why is the U.S. government doing this? The Biden administration says it's a statement against China's, quote, ongoing genocide and crimes against humanity, the Chinese government's alleged mistreatment of its people. We told you last Friday the U.S. was considering this move. It made the decision official this week, and American officials say they plan to continue to pressure China over the issue of human rights. China says America is trying to disrupt the Olympics out of ideological bias and that the U.S. decision was based on, quote, lies and rumors. The communist nation says America will pay the price, but as far as how that might be, the Chinese foreign ministry says wait and see. Some Chinese diplomats and government media employees say it doesn't matter if U.S. officials go there or not, that they weren't invited anyway and that it won't affect the success of the games. But analysts say the controversy could become a bigger headache for China if other countries decide to do the same thing. Previously, Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom have said they were also considering a diplomatic boycott. The athletes on Team USA have our full support. We will be behind them 100% as we cheer them on from home. We will not be contributing to the fanfare of the games. Saki said the president is intent on calling out forced labor and human rights abuses in China. But the White House stopping well short of a full boycott, like the U.S. did in 1980, when President Jimmy Carter protested the Moscow Olympics, keeping American athletes from taking part in the games. I don't think that uh, we felt it was uh, it was the right step to uh, penalize athletes uh, who have been training, preparing for this moment, and we felt that we could send a clear message uh, by uh, by not sending a, an official U.S. delegation. Yesterday marked exactly 80 years since Japan attacked the U.S. naval base of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, triggering America's entry into World War II. It was a surprise assault from the air. What President Franklin D. Roosevelt described as an unprovoked and dastardly attack, and while it killed thousands of American servicemen and crippled the U.S. Pacific Fleet, it galvanized American support for the war, which ultimately resulted in an Allied victory over Japan and Germany. On yesterday's anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack, a number of events were held across America. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden made an early morning visit to the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. There, the First Lady laid a bouquet to honor her late father, who served in the Second World War, and the President stopped at a wreath that contained a flower in honor of Bob Dole, a former U.S. Senator and presidential candidate who passed away Sunday at age 98. Senator Dole had also served in World War II. It was a conflict that changed the world, and each year, surviving veterans of Pearl Harbor share their memories of that tragic day. A date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan.
What continent has the highest average elevation on Earth? Asia, North America, Antarctica, or South America? It's not only the highest place on Earth, Antarctica is also the coldest, driest, and windiest. Despite all the research you can do, there are still some mysteries out there concerning foxes. We know they're nocturnal, they live in dens, female foxes are vixens while males are called dogs. We know they have amazing hearing and are said to make a lot of different sounds. But one important mystery that hasn't unraveled until now is what does the fox say? If you need a laugh, boy do we have one for you. Remember that famous song? What does the fox say? Ding, 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 ding. Well, now we know what Dixie the fox says. <laughs> and Dixie isn't the only giggler. Who is a Finnegan fox? Oh, I'm so happy to see you too. Posted one commenter, they are basically giant squeaky toys. OMG, Dixie's laugh is so adorbs. So adorbs that the folks who rescue foxes at Save a Fox in Minnesota use the giggling to publicize their cause. Hi, Finnegan. <laughs> Hi, Dixie. The foxes tend to giggle mostly when the founder of Save a Fox, Michaela Raines, tickles them. She just has this bond with them and they love her so much. Love her enough, Dixie, to perch on her head. Every morning she delivers raw eggs. Good boy. To these foxes. Sophie. Rescued from fur farms or no longer wanted as pets. Jack is bearing his egg for later. It's for Dixie too. Michaela only has to egg them on to get a giggle. <laughs> the nonprofit even raises funds by selling stuffed toys that erupt in the actual recorded giggles of Finnegan and... This is Dixie? They've sold over a thousand and tend to run out of stock. The next time you hear... What does the fox say? How can she say anything when she's in stitches? <laughs> Genie Most, CNN. <laughs> New York. Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. You know, on CNN Den, our approach is just the fox. We try to avoid the gray areas, don't do things on the sly or get too finicky. Only when we're vixing to wrap things pup do we start kitting around. And even then, it's just to dog you. I'm Carl Azus. Premier High School is in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel. Come on back tomorrow for more CNN.